presented by Lowe's. Another beautiful day here in the islands as we welcome you to Lahaina on the island of Maui. For the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational. This outstanding early season college basketball tournament is packing them in here at the Lahaina Civic Center. And what a matchup we've got for you right now in the first of two semifinals. The Creighton Blue Jays ranked 10th. The Arkansas Razorbacks ranked 9th in the nation. Both coming off impressive wins in the first round yesterday. Amazing we could wrangle Phyllis inside on a day like this, but we've got some good games. And San Diego State, Arizona still to come. Four ranked teams have made their way into the semifinals here in Maui. And welcome Dan Shulman and Jay Billis. Glad you were along with us. Boy, were these two teams impressive yesterday. Let's start with Arkansas. Anthony Black just had a phenomenal game for the Hall. Boy, Anthony Black is such a good player. Had six assists, 26 points, a couple of steals in that ball game against Louisville. Went 9 of 11 from the field. Got out in transition. Great hesitation move. He can shoot it from the perimeter. And more importantly, he can see over defenses. And that's going to be important against Creighton, who's got a number of versatile defenders. Anthony Black can absolutely Absolutely play, but it's going to take more than just Anthony Black to beat an excellent Creighton team. An excellent Creighton team that has as well-rounded and talented a starting five, I think, as any team in the nation. Four of them are on national watch lists. You know, you would say that Arkansas has more athleticism, but not by much. This is an athletic Blue Jays team. Ryan Nemhart never turns the ball over. Baylor Shireman, one of the best passers, an outstanding rebounder. And Arthur Kaluma can guard anybody on the floor. And taking a look at Ryan Nemhart there. 29 assists, four turnovers on the season. And that's going to be a key in this ball game because Creighton cannot turn the ball over and fuel Arkansas in transition and let these athletes get out and run. It is just the third time in Blue Jays history they've been involved in a top 10 matchup. They are 0-2. It is the 24th time in Razorbacks history they've been involved in a top 10 matchup. They are 9-14. and 14. These are two really, really good teams and two teams, Mr. Billis, who travel exceptionally well. This place is rocking right now. It is loud and it's going to get even louder. Both these fan bases are primed for this game. This is one of the, ga this is one of the games that reminds you, Dan, of March and it's one of the, those games that we're going to be talking about for the entire year. Yeah, we hope it comes across as well on TV as it does in person. This gym holds about 2,400 people. There's at least that many in here right now. It'll be the Razorbacks in white and the Blue Jays in blue. Up note, Ryan Kalkman of the outstanding center for Creighton, who rolled his left angle, not ankle, not once, but twice in yesterday's game, is out there and in the starting lineup for the Blue Jays. Paul Sells, Lee Cassell, and Randy Richardson getting us underway with the opening tip, and it belongs to the Hogs. Weave up top, so many different guys can handle so much length and athleticism. Creighton, an underrated defensive team. They play really good defense and do so without fouling. Makai Mitchell over Kalkrenner and he left it short. Let's take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. And again, an outstanding starting five for Creighton. Four players on the watch list and Trey Alexander. Uh, he's as good as any of them. Outstanding defender. That's him with the ball right now. And he figures to draw the assignment of Anthony Black for large portions of this game. This is Arthur Kaluma, who is called for the offensive foul. A little chicken wing around the defender. Creighton does a great job of moving the ball from side to side. They get deep in the corners. This is a fantastic passing and cutting team, but they're going against extraordinary athleticism and length with Arkansas. Black 6'7". Council 6'6", six, six, Walsh 6'7". Six, Black 26 points, 6 assists in yesterday's game. Follows up his miss, but Baylor Shireman down with the rebound for the Blue Jays. One of the best rebounders in the country. He led the Summit League in rebounding last year with South Dakota State. He had a dozen in their win yesterday. Nemhard from the corner. And Creighton strikes first. Boy, what a smart play by Ryan Nemhard. Did a little Nash dribble under the basket, passed out, and then ran directly to the corner for that open three. Black and finds a wide open Makai Mitchell underneath. Anthony Black is special. 
And it's six assists against Louisville. Could have had more. But he can see over defenses and get past you as well. That little under the defender pass is next level. And Black at 6'7 on Nemhard, who is six feet tall. So can Nemhard, who's got great vision, will he be able to see as clearly as he likes? Shire Minot and down for the rebound, Devo Davis. Any time that Arkansas gets to run, they need to go. Davis. He was going, but he missed the running layup. And it caroms off a couple of legs to Kaluma. Now that shows what a, a good shot changer Ryan Kalkbrenner is. He just walls up and makes you shoot over him. Alexander with a soft touch on a fadeaway baseline jumper. Alexander had 17 points against Texas Tech and drew six fouls in that contest. He is, you know, they call him a two-way player. He can really guard, but he's also good offensively. Jordan Walsh, McDonald's All-American, top 25 recruit. And now a deep three, and Creighton will take that all day long. Ricky Council, the fourth, launching a three down near the end of the clock. Watch how smart Ryan Nemhart is. The baseline drive passes out and then runs right to the corner. Devo Davis gets caught up underneath. Wide open three, really smart play by Ryan Nemhart. Greg McDermott is 13th year at the helm of the Blue Jays. Sweet 16 two years ago. Second round loss last year to the eventual national champion Kansas Jayhawks and big 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 expectations for the Blue Jays this year and Anthony Black and Ryan Nemhart are getting to know each other. They've been talking ever since this game began. Well Devo Davis started out on Ryan Nemhart but Eric Musselman made the switch. They're going to put a lot of different players on him, try to put some size on him, make it difficult for him to see over. It looked like Trey Alexander had some blood on him, so they cleaned that up. Now we're ready to get going again. Nemhard suffered a wrist injury last February, cost him the rest of the season, was still named the Big East Rookie of the Year a year ago. Away from the ball, an Arkansas foul. Fourth year for Eric Musselman, who has brought in a tremendous freshman class and, Jay, a very impressive transfer class as well. Well, Eric Musselman did a great job at Nevada, former head coach of the Golden State Warriors. Comes from a, a basketball family. And only one game, day of prep, obviously, for this game. And a, a, a staff that does a great job with scouting. But they had to keep it simple for this one. And Paul Sells, uh, one of the officials today, getting in between Nemhard and Black. Again, there's been a lot going on, and now there is with Mitchell and Kalkbrenner as well. I think both of these teams, and rightly so, know they've got their hands full with the other one here today. A really good shot fake by Kaluma. The shot fakes are going to be a effective against this young Arkansas team. You can get the defenders off the floor, get them off balance. You can take advantage. Alexander guarding Black as expected. And now a moving screen and a foul going against Makai Mitchell, his second. And that will likely get him to the bench and his twin brother, Mikkel, coming into the game for the Hogs. And Mikkel was excellent in yesterday's ball game against Louisville at 12 points, six rebounds, and a couple of blocks. And I just led you astray. It's not Mikkel, it's Trevin Brazil who has come into the game. I took you down the wrong alley there, Jay. I've been down yeah. bad alleys before. <laughs> From the rough streets of, where is it again? Rolling Hills, Rolling California. Hills. That's right, it even sounds right. Nemhard slips. Numbers for Arkansas. Black will finish. And finish through contact. I mean, he got fouled and still was able to finish that play. What a terrific play by Anthony Black. See, they're trying to keep... Arkansas is trying to keep Creighton to a side. You let him get to the other side, they are so dangerous. Kalkbrenner down with a rebound off the Nemhard miss. And the corner three for Nemhard is second of the game. But he's got great feet. Just finds that three-point line, backpedaling after the Kalkbrenner miss. Blue Jays by four early. Devo Davis, the lefty, up and good. Davis, one of the few returnees on this Arkansas team. And very good defender. 
Alexander stripped by Anthony Black, but it'll stay with Creighton when we come back. Good start here in semifinal number one in Maui. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Maui Jim Eyewear. Make every day more beautiful. Ace, the helpful place. And Tommy Bahama. Shop for your team gear at TommyBahama.com. Yes, folks, the struggle is real for uh, Mr. Billis and Mr. Fishback. That guy Out stole your Maui. hat. He did steal my hat. Well, he borrowed my hat. <laughs> He's going to return it. He's on the must bus. He's allowed to steal somebody's hat. And over on the other side, just as passionate a fan base in Creighton. Ryan Nemhard with a couple of early threes. The Blue Jays by two over Arkansas in the first semifinal here with the Maui Jim Maui invitation. Tried to get an initial post for Kaluma. Shireman. And one. He's got a chance for a four point play. Shireman was the cutter off that little flex action. And he used a shot fake. The shot fake was important. A little shot fake, one dribble. And then Council fouled him on the shot trying to recover. Caught him on the arm. And Shireman able to go to the line to complete a four-point play. Summit League player of the year at South Dakota State went to the into the transfer portal. Everybody, including Arkansas, wanted a Baylor, a Baylor Shireman. And boy, what a perfect fit he has been for this Blue Jay program. Well, he knows how to play, and he can really shoot it. How about the elevation on the little short jumper there for Devo Davis? And yeah, Nimhard recovered, put some late pressure on the shot. Davis called for the foul. It is, oh no, it's going the other way. Davis put his hand up. I think he thought the foul was on him. I think two officials might have had a different call, but it's going against Creighton. It's going against Kalkbrenner. Two programs who have only met twice before, both way, way, way back in the day. They don't have many connections there. The only thing they've got in common is they're both outstanding teams right now, and this is going to be a great game. Baseline black, stripped away by Alexander. And Trey Alexander, such a good defender. Great hands and great anticipatory skills. Anticipatory. Next thing you know, you're going to be saying tertiary in contest. Wow. Kaluma had it knocked away. A lot of contact. A great shot fake by Kaluma to open up that drive. Ricky Council the fourth. Off to Mikel Mitchell, who had a nice game yesterday. And Arkansas's win over Louisville couldn't knock that down. Hulk Brenner with the finish at the rim. First thing that Mikel Mitchell has to do is run to the rim to pick up Paul Brenner. He ran back to the lane and tried to help out. But Kalkbrenner is a rim runner. You have to run with him and limit him in front of that rim. Brazil turns the corner. Floater too strong. And a two-handed rebound brought down by Shireman. And Shireman is such a good rebounder. He just has a, a sense for where the ball's coming off and always goes to the glass. 6'6 six, six wing who does a lot of different things. Helps you a lot of different ways. Look at that. What a beautiful feed from Shireman into Kalkbrenner, and it's a timeout, Arkansas. Creighton off to a great start in this semifinal game against Arkansas. The rim run by Ryan Kalkbrenner. You have to run with him to take that away. And then shot fakes have been very effective thus far by Creighton against Arkansas, getting the Arkansas defenders off the floor and just a next level pass by Baylor Shireman. And do you think those shot fakes have been effective because Arkansas has got a lot of young players on their team and, you know, maybe they're, they're you know, their pulse is racing a little bit quicker right now? Absolutely. I mean, it, it is hard when you're trying to close out to stay down on shot fakes. They're effective against experienced players, let alone inexperienced players. Black with a layup to make it a six-point game. And that take by Anthony Black was big time. I mean, there was a ton of contact, and he went right through it. 
You see Debo Davis trying to keep Ryan Nembhard on the right side of the floor, but Brazil's got to get up higher than that. You can't be in drop coverage. you got to be up higher to make sure he doesn't just go down to the sideline, get that pull-up jumper. Well, Ryan Nembhard is known more as a facilitator than a scorer. Not that he can't score, mind you. He had 16 yesterday, and he's already got three threes in this game. Walsh! Wow! What an effort by him, but it won't go down. It stays with the Hogs, though. Now your point on Nembhard as a facilitator, you can be a better facilitator if you've got the ability to score. And Ryan Nembhard can absolutely score. Francisco Farabello into the game for Creighton. A transfer from TCU, a native of Argentina. Also, Mason Miller has come in. That is Mike Miller's son. And his uncle, Ryan, is on the coaching staff of the Blue Jays. Miller 13 in blue. A lefty that can really shoot it and super athletic. Davis, not known for his outside shot. More effective generally when he puts it on the floor. Shireman. Good pass. Miller. Did not travel. This is the freshman, Frederick King, rejected by Trevin Brazil. And it's saved by Black. And there are some plays being made. And Black goads Nemhard into a foul, and that'll be three free throws coming. Heavy play there by, by the freshman. How about the block at the other end? Big time block after a, a solid move, but another great shot fake. This is athleticism. Going up top, and then Anthony Black keeping that thing alive. That's a big time play. Now you've even hurt the feelings of a, what was it, a seal or a sea lion? <laughs> I think Sebastian can do play-by-play. -play. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> John Shambi will be doing some play-by-play -play down in the Bahamas. So will Kevin Fitzgerald, Boog, and Jimmy Dykes have uh, the top half of the draw. NC State, Kansas State, and Wisconsin to the bad boys. Mowers battle for Atlantis. And then Kevin Fitzgerald, Carolyn Peck. Have the bottom half of the draw, BYU, USC, Butler, and Tennessee. And as always, Sebastian available on standby for either role because, you know, if, you, if we know anything about Sebastian, it's that his versatility is his greatest trait. Well, Jimmy Dykes selling out his broadcast partner there with uh, telling, telling Sebastian he needs a little banaka. 11.59 <laughs> to go in the first half. 19 now. 12 for Creighton as... Anthony Black, a three-shot foul charged to Ryan Nemhard. Well, you're getting a, a pretty good look early on in this game at the depth that Creighton has. Now they can sub, and they don't really take a big step down. Turnaround fadeaway there for Shireman. I think he's an NBA player. And Baylor Shireman can absolutely play. Got a great feel for the game. Strong drive by Black and a foul called on King. Arkansas has had great success attacking the paint. And especially when you can get downhill from up at the top. I mean, that's a great take. Getting past Sharif Mitchell, who's a terrific defender. And then going strong to the rim. Jordan Walsh did it before, didn't get the dunk to go down. But when you can get a team like Creighton, which plays really good defense without fouling, when you can get to the free throw line on Creighton, you've taken it hard to the basket. And Black makes them both. Sharif Mitchell now at the point, the redshirt junior from Omaha, Nebraska. Very tough player, good defender. Spelling Nemhart a little bit. Turned over, though. Black is in the middle of everything right now for Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas did this to Louisville yesterday. It's going to be harder to do it to Creighton. But scoring points off its defense. Mitchell, a nice swing to Miller, but a good close out there by Walsh. And Miller's going to have to be strong with the ball. He absorbed a huge bump there. Anthony Black is really good defensively. Long arms and active hands, and Walsh able to knock it away with that little pass, and Black takes it the other way and finishes. 
And that's exactly what Arkansas needs to do. Be disruptive, get deflections, and then turn defense into offense. You cannot guard a run out. Arkansas stepping up the intensity of the defensive end the last couple of minutes. Maluma wants a ball screen, goes the other way. Shireman free behind Kalkbrenner for three. That's great action. Little ball screen and then a fade off the screener. That's just big time offense there. And Shireman with nine. Creighton five for seven from three point range. Walsh working hard. Follow no good. Rebound Kalkbrenner. Boy, this is a man's game on the glass, isn't it? Good fake. Carabello. Around and out and out of bounds to Arkansas. Now, now watch Baylor Shireman here. There's going to be a little, little screen, and then he gets a screen from Kalkbrenner. Just fades right to the wing and ready to shoot when the ball arrives. He is a terrific, terrific player. We'll get a stint on the bench right now. Alexander back in for the Blue Jays. Well, it's hard to imagine a transfer fitting in more seamlessly to a team that Baylor Shireman has fit into this Creighton team. Yeah, we asked Greg McDermott that a couple of days ago, and he said even better than expected because of how much he shares the ball. As Ricky counts to the fourth, a transfer from Wichita State knocks one down for Arkansas. Well, this is like a heavyweight fight. Alexander behind the screen. Misses the three. And whenever Anthony Black grabs a rebound, he can rip and run, bring it up himself. Keeps Mitchell on his back, floats it up, no good. Paluma driving on Walsh, and Walsh really moving his feet to stay in front of him. Oh, what a good matchup this is, and the battle is won by the Hogs. Now the ball is loose and a foul is called. Boy, that's great defense by Jordan Walsh. Yeah, just too much dribbling by Arthur Coloma. This is not a one-on-one -on -one team, Creighton. You know, they want to play five-on-five. Five. A terrific job using his body by Walsh, and then Council comes over. I didn't see where the foul was. That's not a foul. And it's an important call because it is the second on Arthur Coloma. It just, it looked, like, looked like live. All he did was yeah. dive on the ball. That was confirmed by the, the replay. There was nothing there. Averaging better than 14 points, five rebounds per game. But he has gone to the bench and maybe for the half. And now Davis is fouled by Mitchell as the Arkansas perimeter players are getting the Blue Jays on their backs and just kind of keeping them there. You know, it's just a great job of using your body to keep the defender behind you. You're not in legal guarding position behind a guy. Nine oh seven to go here in a very competitive first half, first semifinal of the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. Those towel guys are going to work out today. Yes, they <laughs> they're going to be bodies on the floor all game long. Council too strong. When. Hoffbrenner was in drop coverage there and still able to bother that shot. So far, Arkansas has turned Creighton into more of a dribble team than a passing team. Alexander over the top for Kalkbrenner. Pretty. So good at setting a screen and then rolling to the basket. And Alexander did a great job of Stretching that out, just dragging the defense and then being able to throw it up to Kalkbrenner at the rim. That was a big time play. Beautiful. There's some contact between Mitchell and Davis. And the pull up will go for Council. They need offense out of Council and they need offense out of Brazil when he's in there as well. Well, as soon as Council saw Farabello on him, he knew he had a size advantage, just pulled up and shot right over him. He is their leading scorer on the season, almost 18 a game. Mitchell with a drive. A 
Oh, what a closeout by Council. Carabello forced to put it on the deck, has to give it up. Shot clocks at two. Blocked by Brazil. Elite length and athleticism for Trevin Brazil, and it's Arkansas ball. A six-point lead for Creighton over Arkansas in Jay Pretty two-man basketball. Just a great job of kind of snaking that ball screen and then dragging the defenders a couple of dribbles to give Kalkbrenner the angle to get to the rim. Just a beautiful pick-and-roll play by Creighton. And a six-point lead for Creighton over Arkansas right now. To look at uh, some of the star performers, uh, two lead guards off to a great start today, Jay. Oh, Ryan Nemhart may has made some really smart plays for Creighton, and Anthony Black is as special a freshman as you are going to see, and as special a player. He plays both ends of the floor. Just a, a spectacular basketball player. Guarded by Alexander, he hands it off to Walsh. Council driving over Farabello off the glass and good. That was a set play that was designed to take advantage of that matchup. Eric Musselman wanted to get Ricky Council isolated against Farabello and take him one on one. Council's got their last six points. Nemhard finds Alexander, seven on the shot clock. Hard to find passing lanes with this length. And a turnover committed by Creighton, their seventh of the game. Well, Farabella was looking at the rim before he caught it. He knew he had a shot. Here's the isolation to get counsel against Farabella so he can take him one-on-one. -on -one. They cleared the side when he got the ball up at the top. Really smart, so just an NBA-type action. Trying to take advantage of a matchup that Arkansas felt favored the Razorbacks. Behind the back, Council loses it. Kalkbrenner to the deck. Great play by Kalkbrenner. Remember, he rolled that ankle a couple of times in yesterday's game, but he looks fine. Around and out for Alexander with the rebound down to Brazil. Brazil steps into a three. And Arkansas still doesn't have a made three in this game. They'll try another one, this time Davis. That play will work, the follow for Black, uncontested, he's got a dozen. Boy, how about that play by Black? He makes the pass around the top of the key and then gets all the way to the rim, not worried about defensive balance. Boy, the patience in traffic for Ryan Kalkbrenner. Just a poised big man at both ends of the floor. He is four for four today and came into the game shooting 79% from the field on the season. I got the switch. He's going to take on Farabella. Black misses the three and it's out of bounds. Arkansas ball. Well, it looked like Walsh knocked that out, but there were two guys in front of him, so maybe they got their fingers on it. Creighton's made five threes. Again, the Razorbacks have not made one yet. They're not a great three-point shooting team. They are 0 for 5 today as Kaluma Jay has come back into the game now with two fouls. And you can expect Arkansas to go after Kaluma, see if they can pick up his third before half. Walsh driving. Kaluma cuts him off and takes it away. Numbers. What a pass. Shireman into Kalkbrenner. Hoffbrenner puts so much pressure on your transition defense because he runs right to the rim. Turn around, Devo Davis. Just too tough of a shot. Creighton just does a great job of recovering to get back in front. Alexander with a jump stop and a finish, and the lead grows to eight. Creighton gets a ton of credit, and rightfully so, for its outstanding offensive play. But this is a very good defensive team with a lot of defensive versatility and excellent individual defenders. High arc.
deflecting jumper and a much needed bucket for Council in the Razorbacks. Nemhard changing gears again as he brings it up the floor. Finds Shireman. Their sixth made three of the game. Dan, you cannot relax for one second on this Creighton team. Well, you stop the initial push by Nemhard, and all of a sudden, you got Baylor Shireman getting out to the three point line. Brazil's open for three. And still nothing doing from beyond the arc for Arkansas. And another rebound for Baylor Shireman. Nemhard coast to coast. Double digit lead, Blue Jays. The horn set out top is their V set. And a turnover. Three on one. And Kaluma misses a reverse. Little handoff. Davis can't get the runner to go, though. And the Creighton fans are loving what they're getting out of their Blue Jays right now. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Thanks for the question on the time, by the way. I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> You know, I was watching uh, the great studio coverage that we have, and I noticed that Seth Greenberg did not have his tie cinched all the way up to, to his neck, which I'm sure a lot of viewers would like to cinch it up all the way. Fair. But I think he looks much better now that he's, <laughs> he's cleaned up that look. It looks like they have taken a point off the board. Paul Sells letting us know they looked at the Baylor Shireman shot that was originally called a three. But he had a toe on the line, so they've knocked it down to the two. Just another case where, as you often point out, Jay, they're recruiting guys whose feet are too big. Yeah, the feet are too big. 60% yeah. from the field for Creighton. They have been surgical in the way they've attacked Arkansas in the half court, but have also done an excellent job at getting out in transition. Early on, Arkansas had a significant advantage of points in the paint, but that has been negated now it's 16 16 with points in the paint because Creighton has been much more resolute they've gotten out in transition they've thrown a couple lobs but they're trying to get to put some more pressure on the rim Nemhard has had a really good first half this is the left-handed layup attempt there and back comes black a little ball screen by Hoffbrenner and then a back screen from Shireman and that allowed Nemhard to get all the way to the rim. Great play. Anthony Black to Mikel Mitchell. Well, if you're a big guy for Arkansas, be ready at all times. You never know when it might be coming your way. Well, you have to expect it to come your way, but Anthony Black's got a great ability to blow by. Nemhard uses a screen to get free. Well, he got free, but then also got the ball off quickly before it could be blocked. That's how you negate length, is get it up to the rim quickly. That was beautifully done by Ryan Nemhart. He's having a great first half. And Jay Shireman's third assist of the game already. Got Trey Alexander on a, a block out. But Kalkbrenner did such a nice job of walling up as Anthony Black was going to the basket, forced him to miss. First foul, and Mikel Mitchell will be going to the line as we get another look. Paul Brennan does a great job. Watch Trey Alexander just sort of undercuts Mitchell there just to keep him from getting that offensive board. Mikel Mitchell and his twin brother Makai, who is the starter, they're both transfers from the University of Rhode Island. Mitchell led the Atlantic 10 in block shots last year. He was really good against Louisville yesterday. Came in off the bench, gave great minutes to Eric Musselman. And at 12 points, six rebounds, and a couple of blocks in 20 minutes. Alexander, nice English off the glass. Boy, what a great throwback by Andrew Nemhard. Looked like he was going to turn the corner, threw it back, and then a terrific attack at the closeout. Black into Mitchell, knocked away. Black gets it back. 
Black's going to have to turn that corner and shoot the ball. Wow, a tough driving layup on the baseline. He's got everything. Yeah, he does. What a cut, but Shireman can't finish it. Took some contact, just couldn't finish the play. Great cut from the right baseline. Council from the elbow. Mitchell, what a rebound. Just went right over the top with that long left arm. Took it right away from Shireman. A catch by Cochran. And can he get an angle for the rim? And it's Arkansas ball. Baylor Shireman in great position to get this defensive rebound. And then Mitchell just went right over the top of him with that left arm. That's a great offensive rebound by Mitchell. So about a four second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here late in the first half. Arkansas ball. The slot ball screen. If Black can turn the corner, I think he's got to take that little pull up jumper or floater. Gets into the lane. Oh! I don't know how many players in America could have caught that and finished that. Trevin Brazil's on a short list of those who can. And an air ball at the other end. Was there a trampoline on the floor <laughs> just left of the lane? A 6-0 run in the last minute and a half for the Razorbacks. Here to end the first half. And what a way to finish it off for the Hogs. Black to Brazil up top where few can go. That was up by the square. He's got another step on his ladder. Time now for the Jeep Halftime Report. ESPN's Feast Week presented by Lowe's. As expected, a tremendous first half of basketball between the Creighton Blue Jays and the Arkansas Razorbacks with the Blue Jays up six here in semifinal number one at the Maui Gym. Maui Invitational. Welcome back to Lahaina inside the Civic Center. A berth in the championship game is on the line as we welcome you back inside. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, and you want to focus on the first half Ryan Nemhard had. Ryan Nemhard was terrific. You know, you talked about his ability to get up and down the floor and his speed, but his ability to change speeds and play with great pace, and he makes fantastic decisions. Just getting out to the corner after that pass to Kaluma and then backing up into a three. He had 13 points in that first half, five of eight from the field, had a couple of assists, and just ran the team expertly. Just changing speeds, and look how quickly he gets the ball up to the basket to avoid the block shot by Ricky Council. A leader, but he and Ryan Kalkbrenner, Baylor Shireman, really carried the load for a Creighton team that shot 55% in that first half and 50% from three, five of 10. And meanwhile, for Arkansas, the Razorback shot 44%, did not make a three in the first half. They were 0 of 5 from three-point range, but Anthony Black really carried the load. The 6'7 freshman at 14 points, four assists, and a steal in that first half. Just a high-level first 20 minutes. And I think we can expect much of the same in the second 20 minutes. And we're expecting much of the same in our second semifinal a little bit later on. San Diego State and Arizona still to come here from Maui. Shireman with a nice look to Kaluma, who was... Had some foul trouble in the first half, didn't play all that much, and he gets on the board right away with his first points of the ball game. Well, started the second half with some zoom action, a little screen into a handoff, and then the throwback, and Kaluma was attacking. The three rattles out on Ricky Council, the fourth. Walsh steps into one, and finally, the first made three of the game for Arkansas. The best time to shoot a three, it is documented. Analytics say it is after an offensive rebound, and that's exactly what Jordan Walsh got right there. A step in three after an offensive board by Mitchell. Nemhart so good at keeping the dribble alive. Look at this. Went around a couple of times, a la Steve Nash, but couldn't finish it. Just probing around, but he keeps his dribble. Instead of getting there and giving his dribble up, he keeps his dribble and just probed right through. Just turned around. And then all of a sudden, as he shoots it, Kalkbrenner has inside position on Mitchell and made Mitchell go over the top. 
Meanwhile, Makai Mitchell just picked up his third foul. He's only played four minutes in this game because of foul trouble, and he's going to be taken out again. Trevor Brazil's going to the scorer's table. Kaluma turns it over. It's too much dribbling. That's the second or third time that Arthur Kaluma has been caught dribbling too much instead of just getting rid of it. And that's eight turnovers now for Creighton. Their season average is, what, eight or nine? About nine, yeah. One of the best in the country. Black. And a chance for three. They're going to count it? No, they wave no, it, it off on the floor. before the shot. Well, how do you keep him from getting where he wants to get? He's got such a great handle and with his size. It's not like he just blows by, but he's got tremendous quickness. But Anthony Black is much stronger than he looks. And he comes up with it again and lays it up, follows it, and tips it in. Well, he got fouled, but then still was able to go up with that second jump for the offensive rebound bucket. Now Arkansas back within one possession of Creighton. A strong start here in the second half of the Razorbacks. A strong drive by Alexander, who draws the foul. Well, this second jump, really impressive. Able to accept that bump from Alexander, then goes straight up for the offensive rebound basket. If somebody said to you, I've, I've never seen Anthony Black play, what kind of a player is he? How do you describe him? He does so many different things. Well, he's a 6'7 point guard that has great length and plays at both ends of the floor. He's equally as good a defender as he is an offensive player. But he can shoot it, he can put it on the deck, get all the way to the basket. Boy, Walsh does a phenomenal job moving his feet, but then he got called for a block, and Eric Musselman is beside himself. Well, that's unfortunate for Jordan Walsh. That was a great defensive play. And again, how many dribbles did Arthur Kaluma take here? 10 or 11? Yeah, I'm not sure I get that one. I thought unless he got a piece of his hand. But there have been a, a lot more physical plays on shooters than that that haven't been called. But maybe he got a piece of his hand and just couldn't see it. And these will be just the second and third free throw attempts of the game for the Blue Jays. Yeah, it's been a really physical game devoid of free throws. One of two. Hulkbrenner, though, with a rebound. And Alexander travels another Creighton turnover, their ninth. They're just hearing footsteps. Because Arkansas does such a good job, you got to drive it and spray it. And I think that's what Greg McDermott was saying right there. Drive it, get rid of it, or go straight up. Black with 16 points, five rebounds, and four assists already in this game. Council. Yes. Well, he is a really good pull-up jump shooter. When he gets a matchup he likes, now, he can take it one-on-one. -on -one. You can isolate him. I think you'll see more of that in the second half. Eric Musselman finding a matchup he likes and going after it. Into double figures now with 10. Alexander working hard. And a chance for a three-point play. That is a hard take. You know, there's been a ton of body contact on drives. And you just have to be strong going into it. Foul on Trevin Brazil, his second, the team's fourth already here in the second half. And Alexander at the line for Creighton. 6'4 sophomore from Oklahoma City. Just so solid and reliable, good passer. Number 10, Creighton. Number 9, Arkansas in a good one here in Lahaina. Let's see if Arkansas can get a piece of the paint. Black no and Kaluma the rebound. See, that's not a bad shot, but it's a shot you can get just about any time. Nemhard tried to go 94 feet, couldn't convert. Numbers. Oh, Council! 
What a pass. And the fifth assist of the game for Black was a spectacular one. When Nemark took it all the way to the basket, that really affected the defensive balance of Creighton. Nobody got back, and Arkansas took advantage of it. But that was a fantastic pass from Anthony Black. Baluma turns it over. Again, a lot of dribbling. Yeah, too much dribbling. I mean, his dribble-to-pass ratio is easily 10 to 1. And that's led to the turnovers. Council from outside gives Arkansas the lead. Their first lead of the game. And it is deafening here inside the Civic Center. Hulk Brenner is fouled by Brazil on the alley-oop attempt. Arkansas has ratcheted up the defense, and it gave him an advantage situation, a fantastic threading of the needle in transition off the deck. And Ricky Council, the transfer from Wichita State, the sixth man of the year in the American Conference, above the rim. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. It's the best place to get everything you need for the holidays. Well, if you're enjoying this, don't miss the next game as well. It'll be the San Diego State Aztecs. Brian Dutcher's got a terrific team this year, and they're going to go up against Arizona, a high-flying team that's scoring 100 game in and game out. One team, Jay, phenomenal offensively. The other team known for being phenomenal defensively. It's going to be quite a battle. It'll be a great game, and San Diego State has a lot of guys and a lot of guys that can get you 15 in any given game. You just don't know who it's going to be game to game. You know, Arkansas has five team fouls to start this second half and it's going to be important for Creighton to continue to attack the paint and put Arkansas in a position to pick up even more of those fouls so they can shoot free throws the remainder of the game on common fouls. Paul Brenner knocks them both down. 12 points, 6 rebounds for Ryan Kalkbrenner already. Walsh up top, and another finish for Brazil. All set up by the shot fake by Jordan Walsh. On the catch, gave a shot fake. The defender flew by. That opened up the middle of the lane. You help up. He just throws it right up to the rim. Arkansas never led in this game until the last minute or so. It's been traded back and forth now a couple of times. This is a battle tester. This a good idea to go high-low there, just not a great pass. But watch Jordan Walsh here. Shot fake, Kaluma flies by. Kalkbrenner's got to take that one step up just to protect that rim, and you can throw it as high as you want to Trevin Brazil. 11 Creighton turnovers now. Black challenges Kalkbrenner and can't lay it in. And Nemhart just grabbed by Devo Davis. And the officials are going to have a conversation. Was there any kind of a play on the ball there as he wrapped him up? And the answer is no. They got to go look at yeah. it. I mean, it was just a, a straight up grab. So technically, if you go by the, the way the rule is written, that should be a, an F1. A lane to the basket and just grabs him around. I mean, how yeah. could that not be? Yeah. That, that fits the definition of being a flagrant one. Yeah, the definition of it. Yeah. I mean, you know, if that were done in the open floor, there'd be no question about it. And really not something Davis needed to do. Yeah, and the, ba the baseline it. official, even though he could see the foul, maybe was blocked out to be able to see it live. And the difference, of course, if it's a flagrant one, and there is no intentional foul in college basketball anymore. If it's a flagrant one, it's two and the ball. So that's the difference there. Yeah, and the difference, you know, in an F1 is two shots on the ball.
Lee Cassell was on his way over to the table. Little hand signal with you, flagrant one. Yeah, flagrant yeah. one. Yeah. So it's two and the ball. And Nemhard at the line. And really, the, the F1 on Devo Day is just a momentary lapse in judgment. You know, he got blown by and just reached out to grab him. Nemhard knocks them both down to put the Blue Jays back on top, and they'll get the ball now as well. The starters for Creighton have scored every point they have in the game today, and every point except for four that they have in the two games here in this tournament. Pretty remarkable. Still Creighton ball. Anthony Black is very fortunate he didn't pick up the foul there. He was riding his back. I mean, that's a foul. Paul Prenner trying to spin on Brazil. Oh. Yeah, he did. Had one on one in the post, which is if not the most difficult thing to guard in basketball, one of the most difficult things to guard. But just shuffled those feet. 12 turnovers now for Creighton, and five of them already in the first five and change here in the second half. Council to Brazil inside. Fouled and finishes. We're a little surprised to see Kalkbrenner go out and try to double the ball there in the middle of the floor. That's just a, a quick dive to the basket by Brazil. And the Trey Alexander just a little bit late getting there and got just bumped him as a result of it, but just a terrific job by Brazil to take that bump and finish the play. And now, Jay, Creighton loses Trey Alexander for a while. That's his third foul. They bring in Francisco Farabello, a very good shooter, but not nearly the defender that Alexander is. Yeah, I'm not sure that, that having Kalkbrenner get out there to try to double, it just takes him away from the basket where he's way more effective. And Walsh is going to get called for the foul on the collision with Nemhard. And that's going to put Creighton on the foul line. Walk 90 some feet. So in the bonus with 1440 to go. If you're Eric Musselman, do you change anything here? I mean, you've got to be worried about this becoming a parade to the free throw line. I mean, you still want to stay aggressive. You know, Arkansas is not going to change who they are, but you just want to be smart in how you defend. And look, I mean, Jordan Walsh committed a foul there, but that was, uh, he was going after the ball. You know, you can't fault. It's not like he can look at Jordan Walsh and say, hey, don't go after the ball. You know, he didn't know Nemhard was there. He was just going hard after the ball. And Nemhard now with 17 points, had 16 yesterday in the win over Texas Tech. Looks like a little 2-3 zone now for Creighton, trying to keep Arkansas from getting into the paint. But you can still drive those gaps, especially with a shot fake. Council trying to shoot him out of that zone. For a team that didn't hit a three in the first half. They've got three of them already here in the second half. Parabello, no. Walsh, the rebound. Tough turnaround by Council. Won't go. Anytime Council has Parabello on him, he's going after him. And we've got a technical against the Arkansas bench. I don't know if it's on Eric Musselman specifically or a member of his staff, but definitely a technical against the Arkansas bench. Well, if it's on a member of the staff, they should get rung up. I mean, the official shouldn't have to listen to anything from an assistant coach, period. So Nemhard heads back to the line again. <laughs> 
We don't know specifically which member of the coaching staff it was on, but somebody on the bench. And Nemhard knocks them both down. How can you be mad wearing a Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> it's like trying to look tough drinking through a straw. Like you can't look tough drinking through a straw. It's impossible. And now Paul Sells, one of the officials, asking the Arkansas bench to sit down. Everybody supporting the Razorbacks is booing. Everybody supporting the Blue Jays is cheering. Funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> 2,400 fired up people here in Lahaina. Devo Davis with a foul. And again, remember, Brayton's already in the bonus. It's important now for the Arkansas players to keep their composure. It's a young team, and they have to concentrate on playing. You know, what happened over on their bench is none of their doing. And Shireman misses the front end of a one and one. Davis kicks it back out to Council. Way short. Tied at 53. Woo. Nemhard slips. Balls loose belongs to Davis. No look bounce pass for oh. Zell. And it's stripped by Kaluma. What a spectacular block. Got all ball with that right hand against another spectacular athlete. Watch this block. A runout situation for Arkansas. That looked like all ball. What a great block by Arthur Kaluma. That is just spectacular. Well, we are seeing some big time plays in this game, and we got a ways to go. How about that spin move by Black? He's got 18. Mouse in the house. There's no way that Ryan Nemhard can guard Anthony Black down there low. They're missing Alexander defensively right now with the three fouls. He would normally be the guy on Anthony Black. Parabello free in the corner. The first bench points of the game for the Blue Jays. Just ran Farabello along the baseline, got those feet set, and drilled it. I think you're going to see Arkansas go to Anthony Black, let him go one on one. Walk. Brazil turns it over. See, that wasn't that wasn't the play that Arkansas wanted. Was to get Brazil going one on one. They wanted to let Anthony Black do it. Eric Musselman really talking with the officials the entire game. He has been in some kind of a mood here in the second half, especially with all the fouls piling up on his team. Crossover Nemhart. And Paluma. The pass went astray, but a foul call against Arkansas again. And Musselman's now walked off the corner of the court. He's probably he probably wanted to say that that's a that in football that would be an uncatchable ball. Brazil called for the foul J and that's his fourth. He might have maybe get, he hooked that arm but. Hallbrenner got a great angle. You should be able to see it from here. I don't see it. I just don't see anything there. And they're looking for a hook and hold. I'm I sure think that's right what now. It is. But yeah. They're not going to see. It. If they saw that last angle, they're not going to see anything.
They're going to look at it. We'll step aside. Blue Jays up by one. Welcome back to Lahaina and the Maui Jim Maui Invitational with Jay Billis. I'm Dan Schulman, a one point lead for Creighton over Arkansas. The officials continue to look at the monitor across the court from us, we believe, to see if there was a hook and hold call there against, uh, was it Brazil? Right? It was Trevor yeah, Brazil. Trevor yeah, regarding Kalkbrenner. That, the left arm, did he get it? No. Uh, I mean, there, there, there's nothing there. There wasn't even a foul. But. Does this increase our ratings when they watch TV this long? <laughs> <laughs> Time spent viewing is going way up. <laughs> so we took the under 12 timeout while they were looking, but they are still looking to decide if it should be upgraded. It was called a personal foul. Should, right. it, should it be upgraded uh, to uh, a flagrant one, we believe, is what the officials are looking at right now. I mean, there wasn't even a foul there. So I, I, it seems mind-boggling that it could be upgraded to anything when really I don't even think there was a foul and they may be looking at the clock as well to see uh, if any time needs to be put back on the clock we are being told so an extended timeout for both coaches right now what has Creighton done better the last couple of minutes to cut or in the second half really to kind of swing this one in their favor the last few minutes anyway? well they've been pretty strong in attacking the basket obviously they've made that that block by Kaluma was next level but it's a big part of this game now, the foul situation, that every common foul now, you're going to see Creighton shooting free throws. And Arkansas has still got a ways to go. Arkansas has, Creighton's only got two team fouls in the second half. And so Arkansas has got a ways to go to get to the bonus. So the more aggressive that Creighton is in attacking the basket, the more opportunities they're going to have to hang fouls on Arkansas. And the most efficient place to score on a, on a basketball court is a free throw line. And so we believe, you can tell by the guys lined up in the lane, it has just been called a common foul. Double bonus with 12.09 to go. Ten team fouls in the second half already on Arkansas. And Brazil has four fouls. They've got a couple Walsh. Makai Mitchell with three. But it's the team fouls that are the problem right now with 12 minutes to go in regulation for Arkansas. Boy, a good stand there by Kalkbrenner. Council working incredibly hard, though, and somehow flips it in. Wait, it's so hard to get a shot up over Kalkbrenner. He does such a good job of walling up. And using his chest, keeping his arms straight up and his elbows behind his ears. Council with 12 in the second half and a game high 20 in the game. Davis hounding Shireman in the corner. He's got size. Gets the shot off and hits. That was an NBA play. He knew he had Davis on him. He could shoot over him. He just backed him down. And he knocks it away, but into the hands of Council. Council's got Farabello on him. They might want to go to Ricky Council. Let him take him. Black. Up and good. 20 now for Anthony Black. You can't find a hole in his game. He's got everything. Plays with pace. Just a great handle. An outstanding passer. Shireman off the screen. Now creates a little space. Step back jumper is good. Okay, last year, Baylor Shireman was the only player in Division I that averaged at least 16 points, six rebounds, and four assists per game. The only one in the country. Whoa! Kalkbrenner got all of that. Transition. And they can't take advantage of it. Just had two little guys running the break. Otherwise, Farabella could have run to the rim. Ooh, your little guys are doing it. Yeah. They can play, too. <laughs> Kaluma, yet another turnover. That's his sixth turnover of this ballgame. Right. And the Hogs give it right back. Taylor Shireman does such a good job. A little step back. The lefty gets that to go. And then the little stop and go move by Anthony Black, but just erased by Kalkbrenner. Kalkbrenner doesn't leave the floor until the offensive player does. 
I'm not sure there's a, a big man in the country that impacts the game defensively with so few fouls. It's still Creighton ball. Brazil, who's checked back into the game with four, pleading that that ball was off of Kalkbrenner, not him. You know, and I know Arkansas doesn't like the calls. I'm not saying I blame them, but they got to move on. I mean, there, there are too many hands up, kind of asking why, and you just got to play. Jay, the game's been, in, been within two points one way or another for six minutes. And Shireman a little bit too much there trying to back his man down. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That's interesting. I mean, if you go through his chest, I get it. But it's sort of the idea of, of, the, of dislodging. Just because a player is bigger. But give credit to Devo Davis for staying strong there. Council no. And the whistle. And the foul going against the Blue Jays now. And it'll be Kalkbrenner. That will be his second. I think the problem there for Kalkbrenner is he turned sideways. If he had stayed chest to chest there. You know, he did go, looked like he went straight up, but he went straight up and turned sideways. If you're Arkansas, would you attack the basket every chance you get? Yes. You know, you want to try to get downhill to draw help more than anything. It's not that you just attack the basket for the initial shot, but you draw help and then spray it and play out of it. And you, you, I don't think Arkansas necessarily wants to attack the basket off the initial action. But they've got so many advantages with their athleticism and there are some matchup advantages that I think Eric Musselman can go right at and specifically using Ricky Council. Got a quick shot there at Nick Smith Jr. The outstanding freshman for Arkansas still not playing because of the knee situation. He warms up but before the games. He does some things in practice but still hasn't gotten into the game yet for the Razorbacks as Nemhard and Kalkbrenner connect again. Boy, Nemhard just changes speed so well. And Kalkbrenner caught that ball, kept it hot. Nemhard now has 33 assists to just five turnovers on the season as Brazil knocks down a three. Really smart by Eric Musselman to use Ricky Council to go at Farabello. And then because he, he just sort of used Brazil to pop back out, sort of a almost like a roll replace action. Nemhard foul. Now watch Council going against Farabello. So Brazil sets a little screen. Kalkbrenner trying to protect the basket. And that means that Brazil's going to be wide open. Look at that space that Kalkbrenner has to cover to close out. Just really smart by Eric Musselman to go with that matchup where he's putting Farabello in a defensive hole and then Brazil gets that wide open shot as a result. So the, the choice Kalkbrenner has to make is do you stay with Brazil and all of a sudden Ricky Council can go to the rim with no rim protection or do you give up that open three? And now Trey Alexander, he's been sitting for a while with three fouls back into the game, Farabello to the bench. So this gives Greg McDermott some better options defensively as we expect to see Alexander going back on Anthony Black. And that is the way they'll line up. Another rejection for Kalkbrenner. The Big East Defensive Player of the Year a year ago, Kaluma. A beautiful find again, and Britain extends the lead to three. Just a spectacular passing team. Alexander the assist. Brazil, jump stop, won't go. Good job by Shireman to get there. And now with Alexander, well, how wow. deep is that? Oh my goodness. Range for Baylor Shireman. That was from Molokai. Now the matchup's a little bit better with Alexander back in the ball game. Now you've got size on Ricky Council. Tip back out by Black, but it's out of bounds to the Blue Jays. Timeout on the floor. What a game and what a scene here in Lahaina.
Welcome back. Time now for our play of the game, brought to you by Continental Tires. Ryan Kalkbrenner with a great block protecting the rim, and then Ryan Nemhard keeping his eyes up, getting it to Alexander, and then to Kaluma. That's how you turn defense into offense and get an easy basket. Easy baskets are a result of doing really hard things well. And Creighton, when they can keep Ryan Kalkbrenner by the rim, he is such a difficult shot blocking and shot changing presence to score over. Creighton 8 for 11 in the second half, shooting 60% of the game. A 7-0 run over the last minute and 15. The lead has changed hands 10 times, all of them here in the second half. But even with 10 lead changes, Jay, Arkansas has only led for two minutes in this game. Every time the Razorbacks score to take the lead, the Blue Jays come right back and take it away from them. Well, this is a veteran Creighton squad, and they don't get rattled. And for Arkansas, 42 of their points have come from Ricky Council and Anthony Black. That's got to be the focus of the Creighton defense. Another turnover. The 16th of the game. Council hangs and draws the foul. Now Shireman trying desperately to keep Council from getting to the basket. But the one thing you don't want to do is foul when you've got Ryan Kalkbrenner back there. You know, give Kalkbrenner a chance to block or change that shot and just make Council take a difficult one rather than send him to the free throw line. Easy to say from here, hard to do when you're out there going 100 miles an hour. Council 6'6 junior has mentioned a transfer from Wichita State, 18 points a game coming in. He has been the leading scorer for Arkansas in three of their first four games, and he's their leading scorer so far here today. And the more he can get to the free throw line, the better, because last year at Wichita State, he shot 85%. He and Anthony Black have combined for 44 of Arkansas 66. Kalkbrenner, remember Brazil guarding him has four fouls, and Kalkbrenner converts. Just a little, little on big cross screen to get Kalkbrenner open in the post. And you're right, you're on his hip, you can't afford to foul him. Walsh, foot on the line, rebound Shireman. Number six for Shireman. Kalkbrenner, by the way, 7 for 8 from the field today. And how about this? 36 for his last 41. Nemhart ball on a string, but Black got a piece of it. Anthony Black is so long. Walsh, nice look. Davis. It settles in for him. A big shot for the Hogs to bring him back within three. Boy, how much did Arkansas need that one? And did they call that a two? That is a corner two, I believe. No, now it's changed on our internal scoreboard monitor here, so it is a three for Davis in a three-point game. Again, Brazil playing with four fouls. Kalkbrenner lost the handle on the way up. I think Creighton wants to start going to Shireman a little bit against Devo Davis. That one would have tied it. How quick is Ryan Nembhard to the ball? Shireman leaves this one short. Bodies are flying, and it's Arkansas ball. Davis to the trailer black, and he'll have a chance to tie it at the line. When Kalkbrenner went down, he wasn't able to get back to protect the rim. And a good little over-the-shoulder pass, a little contact down low by Shireman. And Anthony Black able to finish that play. Yet another bucket for Anthony Black. He and Council have really carried the scoring load for Arkansas throughout this game. And let's keep in mind in this amazing game, this incredible pace, this is their second game of as many days for all of these guys. And uh, they are playing their hearts out right now. And win or lose, they've got a third game in three days tomorrow. Well, this simulates what they're going to see in the Southeastern Conference Tournament, the Big East Tournament. Players love this because they don't have to go through practice as much. They can just wake up and play. It's awesome. That put Shireman, get him isolated. Kaluma, long reach, good touch. Creighton by three. And the shot fake set it up. 
Shot fake, get the defender off balance, a straight line drive, and nobody came over from the weak side. Black turns it over. Paluma's got Nemhard. And Davis does a great job getting back on defense. A really smart decision by Nemhard not to force it. Possession is more important. Shireman going by Makai Mitchell. And turned it over. Boy, excellent help. Council. Hall got, right. uh, yep. Excuse me, I thought Kalkbrenner got a piece yeah, of that. You're right, just a fingertip maybe. Boy, if you hesitate, allow him to recover, he's going to get it. What a play. It won't go down. But initiating the contact, and Ryan Nemhard will be at the line when we come back to Lahaina. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Maui Gym Eyewear. Make every day more beautiful. Hawaiian Airlines, serving Maui with nonstop flights from Kahului to 10 West Coast cities. And Ace, the helpful place. Three fifty-eight to go in the second half here with the Lahaina Civic Center. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis with you at the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. And Jay, this game has been everything we hoped it would be, and maybe even a little bit more. It has been high level. And how about how Arkansas has been able to turn over Creighton, a team that averages what eight, nine turnovers a game. Arkansas has forced seventeen turnovers in this ball game. And have scored 21 points off those turnovers. That's been a big factor in Arkansas being within striking distance. But here's where Creighton has had an advantage in this second half at the free throw line. And the first miss of the game for Ryan Nemhard, who had been eight for eight. And Nemhard's been spectacular. 21 points, five rebounds, five assists in this game. He has played a lot of minutes, so has Colt Brenner, Shireman on the other side, Council, Davis, and Walsh. Anthony Black as well with a ton of minutes. Brazil, the follow and the finish. Trying to put Colt Brenner into some ball screen action. And Brazil able to just dive when Shireman comes over. Anthony Black was wide open in the corner. Boy, Colt Brenner's got amazing patience underneath the bucket to see where the traffic is and wait it out. Well, that was a great back screen by Baylor Shireman to free up Paul Frenner. So Brazil trying to pull Paul Frenner away from the bucket. He does, and he buries the three. Boy, Brazil's given them some really good minutes here in the second half, playing with four fouls. One point game. Backdoor cut, Shireman runs down the pass, and still lots of time. Nemhard. Whoa! The littlest guy on the floor elevates. What a play. Brazil to tie it. Yes! What a game. And a Kalk Renner. Who's got it? Kaluma. Up and in on the third attempt. Got it with the left hand. What great second effort by Arthur Kaluma. What a high level game this has been. A minute 45 to go. Blue Jays by two. Welcome back. Creighton by two over Arkansas. Jay, we have seen a lot of different kinds of great plays from Ryan Nemhard the last couple of days, but we hadn't seen this one yet. Well, he got an angle on Anthony Black, got past him, took it all the way, and just punched it. Smallest guy on the floor elevates over the rim. 
And then Trevin Brazil has been game changing in this, trying to get Brian Kalkbrenner away from the basket. If he protects the rim, then they kick it back out. And what a big time play by Arthur Kaluma to get in there, get that offensive rebound. Didn't get it, but then got back up there with that right hand and tipped it in. You know, I like the action that Arkansas runs when Devo Davis has the ball and they bring Brazil up to set a screen with Anthony Black in the corner. So when when Brazil rolls to the basket or if they drive, if they help off the corner, you've got Anthony Black for a corner three. And Black is in the corner right now as Diva Davis brings it up. And here it is. Here comes Brazil. And go to the other side. The drive by Walsh. And he draws a foul. Team seven fouls, so that is now bonus for Arkansas. And Makai Mitchell in for Brazil. We haven't seen a Mitchell in a while, so it looks like Eric Musselman going a little offense defense day now with the five spot. This is where free throw blockouts become big. You got to get into the the legs of the second second slot guys. High game. Big free throws for the freshman. A key matchup is Devo Davis on Baylor Shireman. Shireman is bigger. He can take him down into the post. Tough catch in traffic and a reverse slam for Kochbrenner. Yeah, he just discarded Mitchell. Just put him on the deck, and what a great catch and finish on the other side. And it's a two-point lead for the Blue Jays with a minute to go. Got a switch. Mitchell with a smaller defender. Alexander on. What a pass. Davis for what would have given them the lead. Alexander wraps it up. Still plenty of time for Arkansas. They don't need to foul here. Just down two points. Black fouls. Musselman beside himself. Alexander heading to the line. Now watch Ryan Kalkbrenner here. He just discards Mitchell, the defender. Just puts him on the deck. They throw over the top and just dunks it on the other side of the rim. Kalkbrenner with 21 points in this game. Trey Alexander heading to the line now today. 0 for 1 from the line in this one. Came into the game 8 for 10 from the line on the season. Two shots. You make this as a, obviously a two possession game. So Arkansas doesn't need to have a three. Just get it to the rim as quickly as possible. And if you draw the defense and can kick it out for a step in three, then take it. Four point lead. Well, you got to admire this Arkansas team, and this is without Nick Smith Jr. Black driving, and Shireman is called for the foul. Non-shooting, well, a common foul, so one and one coming now for Anthony Black. Anthony Black has been brilliant in this game. Just brilliant. That's two days in a row he's been brilliant. Uh, I think we're yeah. going to have a, he's going to have a lot of days in yeah. a row of brilliance. 26 and 6 assists yesterday, 22 and 6 assists today. And he has played 38 minutes in the game. Also grabbed 6 rebounds. I mean, he plays every aspect of this game. A couple of steals. But these are huge free throws. Gets the roll. He thought he missed it. He was hard charging in, thinking it was going to come off to the left, but it went in. And we 
got a foul. No, you got no, no, a lane, lane violation. violation. My, forgive me. A lane violation was in Walsh, I believe. Walsh called for a lane violation. There it is. Yeah. And now the pressure and the foul, and if Creighton can make their free throws, they're in great shape. And Kalkwinder, a good free throw shooter. Well, it's a lot different stepping up the line with two shots and with one and one. But it's also helpful to step to the line with a three-point lead rather than two because of that lane violation. Boy, a lot of hard minutes for these guys today in their second game in, a, in two days. Creighton has made 14 of its last 16 free throw attempts. Arizona, San Diego State waiting their turn. And he missed them both, and it's a one possession game. Davis lost it, got it back, put it up, and draws the foul, and will go to the line for two. Aggressive play by Devo Davis. Threw some contact off the initial drive twice. And then Kalkbrenner came into him as he was going up. Number four on Kalkbrenner. So Davis's first trip to the line today. So the lefty now with some really important free throws here. Creighton has to expect full court pressure. timeout with 18.8 to play in what has been just a fantastic game. The field was great. We knew when we were coming to Maui, the basketball would be terrific. And this was a game we kind of looked at. If these two teams got here, the way they play so differently, but we thought it would be this good of a game. Both these teams can beat anybody in the country, and Arkansas is still not full strength. When they get Nick Smith Jr. back, he raises everybody's level. He's a superstar. But you, can, you have to give a lot of credit to Arkansas with this young team and all the new pieces after two straight elite eights to play this high level of a game with this kind of effort and put themselves in a position to win against a team in Creighton that, that I think has been undervalued even ranked number 10. Creighton can beat absolutely anybody. Both these teams are final four, yeah. final four talented and final four good. Top 10 matchup that has felt like a top 10 matchup. It's kind of felt like a regional final kind of game. And we've still got just under 19 seconds to go. Creighton with the ball and a one-point lead. You have to expect contact here. Barabello taking the ball in. He can run the baseline. So Paul Brenner, at least for the moment, is out of the game for Creighton. Barabello taking his place. And Davis will foul Shireman to send him to the line. Shireman is one for two from the line today and Jay those are his first free throws of the season he is not a guy who goes to the line very often yeah, he's a perimeter player even at his size two shots got an unusual stance at the free throw line he kind of straddles it with his left foot it's not like his, his toes are pointing at the rim. They're pointing toward the, the sideline. And now Greg McDermott bringing Kalkbrenner back into the game on defense. Bringing in to, to protect the rim. One thing you don't want to do here, Kaluma and Kalkbrenner go over the back here. Two big free throws and a three-point lead with 16 seconds to go. Black's going to drive it, kick it, counsel. No. Nemhard has it and they'll foul him. Arkansas got the shot they wanted. 
Smart to attack the basket, try to get the two, and if you draw the defense, draw help, kick it to an open three-point shooter, got exactly what they wanted. You can't ask for a more open shot to tie this game. And Nemhard with a chance basically to salt it away. Two free throws coming. Brazil fouled out on the play. I'll tell you what, you know, you get Creighton, I knew was legit coming into this game. I can't tell you how much respect I've got for this Arkansas team. Four point lead. Black trying to draw the contact, hits the shot. One point game. And another foul with 2.3 seconds to go. Of course, Black. Black's got to be careful. He was hollering, saying that he was. We thought he got hit. Yeah, that he thought he got fouled on the shot. He might have gotten ticked a little bit. No, uh, not much. He tried to lean in and create the contact, but you. Then he, the more impressive part is he hit the shot. Yeah, it looked like he grazed his uh, his elbow, just grazed the, the uniform of Trey Alexander. But there is no quit in Arkansas, none. I mean, that's just a big time performance by such a young team and a, a young team playing without a superstar performer, Nick Smith Jr. Still saying he got hit on the elbow, so it'll be two free throws for Trey Alexander, even if he makes them both. It's still a one possession game. Alexander did take a chance leaping there, knowing what the situation was, as opposed to you know, risking stepping into a foul situation. I don't think there's a foul. You think there's a foul there? No, I'm not no, saying this. Yeah, I don't think there's a foul. Heck of a shot by a heck of a player and a one point game with 2.3 to go. It's just the, the fight that impresses you. That there, there has been no give in or give up on the part of this young Arkansas team. They're looking, I think they're looking at the clock here. So the clock stops as soon as the, the ball clears the net. So 2.9, whatever it is. And then inbounded in the foul right there. Every tenth of a second is important in this kind of a situation. Boy, especially with how quickly and easily these teams score. And it's gone down to 1.9. So the clock didn't run at all after the ball was inbounded before the foul was committed. So another four tenths of a second to come off the clock. It is actually not bad strategy here. Or not a bad outcome if you miss the second one. So it's gonna be it's gonna be awfully difficult to set up something going long off of a missed free throw. I think you'd still rather have the three point lead. But missing it is not necessarily bad news for Creighton. Well, you talk about the old cliche where it's a shame either team has to lose a game like this, huh? If this goes in, you can expect Arkansas to call a timeout. It does. And it looked like it was Greg McDermott who called the timeout. His last. We've seen some pretty creative inbounds plays just even in the at the start of the season. You know, yeah. Michigan State, you know, yeah. going long, able yeah. to, you know, they pass it along the baseline to somebody stepping out of bounds right. to free themselves up and, and trying to throw long. That's not necessarily a bad idea. Some teams have started with all their <laughs> All their guys along right. the baseline, like, like yeah, yeah. Well, like they're starting out at a track yeah. meet or something. Yeah. But I think you want to have somebody, somebody deep, so you can throw the ball, you know, throw the ball deep because obviously you need a three here in a short amount of time. So you can maybe a catch, catch one dribble and you got an opportunity. But there's not, not going to be a lot of 
Not going to be a lot of shenanigans after yeah. you catch it. You got to get that ball up. You know, what a great week. These teams come out here. They go surfing. They have a luau. They you know, spend time with hundreds of their fans who have traveled out here for Thanksgiving. But when it gets down to business in this little gym, boy, it gets intense. And this one has been a 10 out of 10. Uh, in terms of how intense it has been and it is not over yet now one name we should mention who is coming to the game is Joseph Pinion he came in earlier when a teammate of his fouled out he is a freshman from Moralton Arkansas he can shoot the ball he can really yeah. shoot it not saying he's getting it but just in case it's his touch we got to get his name in there yeah, if he does if he does get it it is not bad news for yeah. Arkansas and now Eric Musselman will call a timeout. These, both these fan bases have been been great, but I got to tell you, Arkansas wins the T-shirt battle by far. <laughs> Their T-shirts here yeah. have been awesome. Aloha, Aloha, first one is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Hawaiian two, hogs, you yeah. can see there. They they have dominated the T-shirt game here. They have traveled great. So have Blue Jays fans. And you know what? San Diego State and Arizona, they are right there with them. And that's our next semifinal coming your way 20, 25 minutes after the end of this one. They're waiting. Let's go. Let's go. They're saying. They dominate. They're dominating the hat game, too. I got to get me one of those lids, man. Those are cool. <laughs> So it's Davis, Pinion, Black, Walsh, and Council for Arkansas. Davis will inbound, and Greg McDermott's got his seven-footer on the ball. And Davis can run the baseline here. To Black, 50-footer. And Creighton wins an unbelievable basketball game here in Lahaina. It's hard to imagine more of a high-level contest than this. Just a spectacular basketball game by two teams that are capable of reaching Houston. Two great teams in a great basketball game. Time now for our player of the game brought to you by Tommy Bahama. Ryan Nemhard, Jay, is the choice. Well, Ryan Nemhard was just spectacular. Career-high 25 points, a floor general, just did everything. And, and that dunk he had, just awesome. Just a fantastic performance by Creighton and equally fantastic by Arkansas. Great, great basketball game. More basketball coming. San Diego State and Arizona still to come. Could it be as good as this one? We certainly hope so. 90 to 87 Creighton over Arkansas for Jay Billis and our crew. I'm Dan Shulman saying thanks for joining us here in Maui. Let's send you back to the studio one more time with Seth Pons and Zubin.